Hi everybody, welcome back to another Multimeter Review. My name's Darren and enjoy the show. And before I start, let me just quickly say Happy New Year, Snovam Gorum, and all the best for 2018. So today we are looking at a new meter that just came on the market very recently, pretty well towards the, towards the end of 2017. It is the B-Side ESR02 Pro it calls itself a transistor tester, but it's actually, well, an ESR meter. It does do transistor testing as well, but um, most people that would be buying this device, I would assume probably get it for the ESR feature. Um, it also does capacitance, and uh, it's a pretty nifty little device. I paid approximately $35 Canadian for the meter. It shipped via eBay fairly quickly, around two and a half weeks. And um, there it is. What do you get with the, the meter itself? Well, you get the box, you get an instruction manual. Not much to it, really. It is fairly verbose. It gives you quite a lot of information. But it is on one piece of paper. It is in English on the front and Chinese on the back course you get the meter itself and you should be getting a pair of test probes um, in my case I did not receive any probes with this meter so these are not the stock probes that it's supposed to ship with that being said um, they do the job just fine and uh, I'm quite content a couple of neat features about this meter are the fact that it also can do transistor testing um, frequency um, has a frequency generator um, the output is I believe 1 Hertz to 2 megahertz at a 5 volt amplitude um, as the, you as we mentioned before it does ESR but it also does capacitance plus ESR and it has a self-testing calibration procedure which we'll go through first in terms of measuring parameters, it does resistance up to 50 mega ohm, capacitance from 25 picofarad to 100 millifarad, inductance from 0 0.01 millihenries to 20 henries, and the ESR is measured from 2 microfarad to 50 millifarad. So, what we're going to start with today is first we're going to do a general overview of the meter itself. As you can see, it's a unique de device, a kind of unique shape. Um, it has a nifty little typical ESR value um, chart on the back. Now my problem with this is the because of the red or indigo color of the meter itself, it tends to blend in with the chart, so it's a little bit hard to read. Would have preferred something uh, more contrast um, but anyway the charts there now it is on the back as well so if you want to look you're gonna have to flip your meter over to verify whether or not your uh, ESR value is within range or not it takes one nine volt battery has your typical connector Now, if you can hear that, it's not a snug fit with that battery. So what I would normally do is I'll take out a piece of felt and I will make it a little more, um, a little less rockety rock. Oh, I did notice that, but actually it ships with a, looks like it's a piece of plastic over the screen. Okay. Oh yeah, feels good. Alrighty, and um, another interesting feature is you have two buttons. They both do the exact same thing. Now, according to the manual, it's for left or right-handed users. I find that a little interesting. Being right-handed as I am, I don't have any preference in terms of where my power on/off should be placed. I thought maybe there was a certain uh, functionality mode that would have been different, 
but no, nope. they do the exact same thing. They're both on off switches, just one's for left haze and one is for righties. So go figure. On the board itself here, you've got your small little plates and these are where you can throw on your SMD devices. <clears throat> this is a discharge. So if you have a capacitor, I believe it was from 50 volts, 2000 microfarad max. Um, there is a uh, resistor inside the unit that will automatically discharge. So you would put that cap right here. Um, here's the actual um, uh, plates for the uh, capacitors themselves or the transistors. So you have an option with this meter to physically bypass the leads and use the um, surface mounted plating here on top to measure or you can use the leads. In this case, today we're going to be using the leads. It's just a little bit easier for uh, demonstration purposes. Okay. That being said, we'll boot up the device and we'll take a look at how it looks. Okay, um, I brought in an Agilent U1732B LCR meter. Uh, this Agilent does not do ESR. Um, it does have a big brother who does, but this particular unit does um, not. It's uh, strictly an LCR meter. But that being said, uh, what we'll do is we'll start off by measuring capacitance with the Agilent. And we're going to start with a 100 microfarad electrolytic cap. And we'll just see what we are looking at in terms of the capacitance. Now this should be a fairly good cap. And we're showing a 95.6867. So 95.6 according to the Agilent, and that's at a frequency of 100 hertz. Okay, so what we'll do now is we'll take that off. And we will hook it up to the B side. And we'll just see how close they are. Apologize, it's a little bit awkward seeing my big hands in this front of the screen, but bear with me. Okay. Now to turn on the B side, you can use either the left or the right button. And there we go. Testing. And the B side is showing us a 97.21. So in comparison, they're pretty well spot on. In terms of ESR, as you can see, it's 0.69. And for this cap at 100 microfarad, if we were to turn this around, and if we were to actually look at the screen, whoops, it's a little hard to say, like I said, the contrast really sucks. They should have made it a different color, but 0.76 in that range. So, Point seven seven, so it's pretty well spot on. So here we have a good capacitor. All right, I'll just take the Agilent out of the way and we'll test another cap. Okay, so the next capacitor we're looking at today is a 100 microfarad once again, but this is a 450 volt capacitor. Now, um, a quick disclaimer, please discharge your capacitors. Make sure they are fully discharged before you um, do any sort of measuring or touch them because anything over 50 volts um, can kill you. And at the same time, this type of voltage can also kill your meter. So discharge the cap. Now, as I said, this particular device here, um, we could not use because it's rated at 50 volts and if this was a fully discharged cap which it is not it's been discharged already um, it would blow the meter but if it was 50 volts or under technically all you had to do is sit it on the discharge plate like so wait two or three seconds the built-in resistor inside will automatically discharge it 
course you can use the standard screwdriver method. Once again, if this had 400 volts in it, it could probably arc and it would glue the capacitor to my screwdriver and create a heck of a bang. <clears throat> so be very careful when you're dealing with high voltage caps. Um, please. Alrighty. So now we have a discharge capacitor and we will just see what we're looking at. Hook it up. Alrighty, so now we're connected and we will boot it up and we will see what we have as our rating. So 88.96, then ESR of 0.49. Now I had also put this onto the Agilent and the Agilent was showing a uh, reading of 90. So in terms of the actual capacitance reading, they're pretty well identical. But the ESR here is 0.49. And if you recall, let's see what we have here. Now this was a high voltage cap. Um, yeah. Now according to the chart, it's I'd have to look at another chart because this one only goes up to 250 volts for 100 microfarad, and it stops there. But um, I will just double check. Okay, so yeah, that's uh, that big capacitor is according to the tables within the proper ESR spec. So yeah, once again, please be careful. And um, yeah, very interesting. You know, when I pulled this off, it had the um, glue stuck to the PCB. In fact. This is the actual PCB that it came out of. And um, I originally suspected that this was a dead capacitor. Um, <clears throat> when I was uh, doing in-circuit testing, I was getting extremely low uh, uh, capacitance. Um, but once I removed it and uh, checked it with my meters, um, everything looked good. So uh, yeah. Now, when you do in-circuit testing, um, there's always a chance that you're not going to get a, a nominal or a, a proper value. Um, but we'll try, uh, we'll do one, uh, one test here with the meter, uh, with the cap that's actually attached to this PCB. Um, this was pulled from a LCD display, approximately 10 years old. Um, quite an interesting... Uh, Piece of equipment. Um, here we've got an inductor transformer, another resistor. It's working now, um, but I took it back apart um, for a project that I'm looking at doing uh, down the road. Alrighty. So what we're looking at now, this will be the final test. It is a very tiny as in a rated at 68 nanofarad. It's really hard to see, but there it is. So according to the Agilent, it's showing up as 65.22 nanofarad. And we once again try this with the B-side. Hook it up. Turn it on. Let's see what we've got according to the B side. So 59.76 compared to the 65. So um, once again, yeah, no problems there. Alrighty. Okay, we'll try the self calibration mode again. There we are. Press the button. And it is calibrated. So, simple as that. Um, you can do this either every time you want to use the meter, if you want to be 
extra precise or um, or not. Uh, like I said, this is a little bit finicky, but um, yeah. Okay, so taking a sneak peek inside, what do we have? Well, not a heck of a lot. We don't have any shielding, that's too bad. Um, it's always nice because you're around all sorts of RF in the lab, uh, on site, whatever. It's always nice to see shielding on any multimeter. I don't care what type of meter it is. Um, interference is always there and it's nice to at least control it to some degree, but alas, so it is, there is no shielding on this meter at all. Um, if we take a look at the inside, not a heck of a lot to it. Um, we have an oscillator, we have the main ISC, we have a resistor array down here. This is the discharge. Here, I'm going to try and get a little closer for you. Apologize. It's a little fuzzy, I know. Um, this is the resistor for the um, uh, discharging of the, of the caps. So that's that big bad boy right there. So he's good for 50 volts. And uh, yeah, um, as you can see, we've got a device because you can power this with a separate um, adapter. Although, I don't know, I think the nine volt uh, will suffice for my needs. I guess it's always handy dandy to so um, in closing, I just want to say that uh, bang for the buck, this is a pretty neat little device. It's pretty unique, um, definitely different looking. There's a lot of really cheap ESR meter uh, kits on the market, what have you. Um, nothing wrong with those. I think they're great as well. Um, but for an out-of-the-box out uh, component like this, uh, this is a really neat little niche device. Um, price is right. It seems fairly accurate, at least... Uh, compared to the uh, Agilent LCR meter. And um, yeah, I think there's always room for one more meter on anybody's bench. So I'm gonna give the B-side, ESR02 Pro, four out of five. Thanks for watching everybody. And until the next multimeter video, keep on testing.